So hey, it's another Friday, but it's not really Friday here, it's Monday. And the reason it's Monday is because it's the day after our great big huge polymer clay event. Didn't we have a great time, girls? Oh, oh we had a great time. Yes. Uh, this is Marsha Tezzolino and this is Irene Hoffman, my friends from California. Hey. Marsha is on my design team for Visa Boutiques and Irene is such a participant and she administrates the Palmer Clay Board for the Visa Boutiques creative group. I'm so thrilled to have them here with me today so I had to strike while the iron was hot because they're going back home tomorrow. So today they are going to share something with you that I don't really quite know how to do yet. I kind of sort of know but they are the experts and it's going to be a mixture of Christy Friesen's painterly clay technique and also what they call polymer clay embroidery. And we're going to do this with polymer clay, Primo to be exact, and some basic tools and also the Bisu Boutiques mounts that you can get at bisuboutiques.com where you know Bisu Boutiques is where you get all the good stuff, the quality. Right. And we have two quality teachers here to show. I keep banging you. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is the first time we had three. Um, anyway, but anyways, <laughs> these two very qualified teachers are going to show you how it's done. So before we get too far along here, get on over here so they can show you how. Hi, everyone. Um, this is Marcia speaking. Um, I wanted to share with you uh, some techniques that we've learned recently about polymer embroidery. Um, we can use any kind of bezel from Bisu Boutiques. It can also be, we don't have an open backed one here, but we can, you can also use open backed. Um, this one, this stamping is beautiful on the front as it is, but if you want to get very creative, you can turn this over and you can take a piece of polymer clay and you can condition it by just working it with your fingers until it becomes a little soft and pliable and then you can press the clay into the back of the bezel and we're going to do that. This piece isn't quite big enough to fill this whole piece um, but you want to press it in and kind of work it with your fingers out to the edges but not go over the edges and then you also want to, you can either leave it flat which to me that's just a little bit boring but um, you can mound it a little bit too if you have enough polymer. It probably would have taken uh, two of those small bricks that I showed you in the beginning to fill this completely. This one, oh, I wanted to tell you this particular finding or stamping is um, from Bisu and it's Brox 09167 Brox Heart Bezel, and it's really beautiful. You could paint on the front too, then have a two-sided pendant. This one is just on this bezel. It's plain, it is not very high, but it works perfectly for this. And this one, you'll see that I did dome it ever so slightly. This one is um, BEZ0820H. And you can choose um, the background color of your choice. Um, you want to put, you can use a dark color or a light color. You can see in this one that I started, um, I decided to use a white background because I wanted to do an Asiatic lily in um, red and I wanted it to show up really, really brightly. Um, this one, I used um, an olive green and um, we're going to use some brighter colors on this one. Some um, fuchsia, some purple, a little bit of yellow, maybe some white, and then some uh, maybe a different shade of green for vines and leaves. So first off, you see all these little balls of clay on my work surface here. Um, we use a variety of sizes of these little balls and you want to tear them off and just roll them into little circles. And then this is the tool I use most often. I call it a stylus or you can call it a pointy tool or whatever floats your boat. But um, 
this is what we use most often when we're doing the beaded embroidery. I'm sorry, the polymer embroidery. I also do beading. I just got confused. Okay, so I take the stylus and I take a little piece off of what I have on the board here and roll it into another little ball. And I put it down here if it will cooperate. Sometimes it sticks to your finger and you just want to go for it at your finger without sticking yourself, of course. And then I take the stylus and I just poke it ever so lightly in the middle so that it'll allow me to pick it up off the surface. And I come over here and I'm going to do this right next to the vine that I have on here. And hold on to your piece so it doesn't slip. And I slide it on here and I just bring it down like that. And it makes a little tiny flower. And I do this along the edge of the vine to give it some fill in the um, empty spaces and to just um, a little design element that you can use. You can do this in a different color. Um, I'm going to show you in a second how to do, and the other thing about these little things, you can do them in different sizes too. And that looks really nice. You stack them one on top of the other so it looks like um, little tiny bell flowers growing onto a vine. I'm going to slide one more in here. Okay, now, just for a little bit of variation, I'm going to take a little piece of white. I'm, I don't, here, I'll put it on the tile so you can see it better. And I'm going to take really little pieces of this, teeny tiny little pieces, and make those into the same little balls. Use my stylus to pick it up. And now I'm going to go right back into the red flowers I just put on there and I'm going to slide this right in the center and drag my stylus so it looks like it has a white center. You can see how teeny tiny these are. That's why it's called embroidery. Mm -hmm. Teeny little stitches of polymer clay. And then you just continue on with this technique um, it's, it's your design, so you can do as much or as little as you like. And when it's finished, you'll want to bake it in a, um, I recommend a toaster oven. I think most polymer clay artists will use a toaster oven, and it has to be a dedicated oven because um, when the clay is baked, it gives off some fumes that are not you don't want them in your food. Yeah, you don't want them in your food, and you really probably don't want them in your lungs too much either. Mm -hmm. So you want to do it in a very well ventilated area. And the temperature for Primo clay, which is what we're using, is uh, 275 degrees. Um, we start out, like for a, a piece this size and this thick, uh, we would bake this for 30 minutes, and then it'll be done. When you get it out, you can finish it, add chain, turn it upside down like this one is, add some dangles. You can put diamond glaze on it. You can use a uh, Sculpey has two polymer glazes, one in gloss and one in satin that are very lovely to finish it off. You can put some Pearlex powders on it to give it some highlights in certain areas. Perfect, perfect pearls. pearls, that's what yeah, I use, yeah. the perfect pearls. And it comes in several different colors. And you can just put a little bit on, you can actually put that on before you bake it or after you bake it, it's up to you. And um, I've actually used resin on top of it too, ice resin from Bisou Boutiques. So that's how we do that part. Okay, now we're gonna try a little of this new technique I just learned over this past the painterly, weekend. Painterly clay. Painterly clay. And we're going to take, I don't know, I don't have a design in my head. I kind of wing it a lot of times. I just start putting stuff on and then it kind of just flows and comes to me when I do it. So um, I'm going to use one of my, kind of my funky tools here. And I'm going to go in here 
and I'm going to put a little piece of this brilliant fuchsia clay I'm going to just lay this on here like this and I'm going to curve it a little because I don't really like straight lines too much <laughs> and you just press it down ever so lightly and then I'm going to take a little bit of this yellow and this yellow doesn't look like a pure bright yellow because it's mixed with translucent clay and I'll show you we use this in the stained glass technique that we learned mm -hmm. on the, over the weekend. Okay, so I'm gonna make this one just a little bit longer. So I have a short piece and a long piece. I'm gonna lay this on right next to it, a little on top of it, and I'm gonna curve it the other way. And I don't know where we're going with this yet. Mm -hmm. It's just on there. And now I'm going to use this end of my tool. And I'm going to, can you see that? Or is my hand in the way? Let's see. We're going to go on here like this. And we're going to smooth this like this. And it's making a little bit of a mess. We're going to take that off. But look what it did right here where the two colors combined. It looks like I took a paintbrush and painted that together and you can dent right into your mound of clay and stretch it out and just keep moving that color up up the line like that and then we're going to come back we're going to do some more on the yellow I'm going to come off a little bit like this so it looks a little more textural and sometimes you have to clean this off a little bit I use just a, a wipe to clean that off because the clay will stick to it sometimes then we're going to come over here this kind of looks like a feather and we're going to do the same thing over here pour it off the edges and it doesn't have to be anything perfect because nature is not perfect as we all know And then I'm going to take, um, I'm going to steal some of this green that I put in this bezel belt over here and use a little bit of that up here on the top. Take a small piece. And I'm going to make it a little thinner. You make it thinner just by rolling it with your finger and moving your finger back and forth and it will get very very thin however thin you want it or however thick you want it lay this on here like this press it in there a little bit and then I'm going to come the opposite way this time just drag it out like that And I kind of like that. Um, let's see. Let's put a little purple in there just for kicks. Sometimes it's good to get like three colors and ways to it. Yeah. Exactly. And I like color, so I tend to mm -hmm. go a little overboard sometimes. Yes, Marsha, you're very colorful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to do the same thing here on the other side. And don't worry if you get a little dent in your in your little um, base clay because you can always take your tool or your finger and pat it back out. Okay. There. All right, and then we're just going to do the same thing again. Hmm. Make it look like a feather. Come on, baby. 
Lay down now. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm going to just leave this the way it is. And then um, I think I will probably um, embellish it a little bit with, um, oh, maybe I'll just do that right now. I'm going to just take a little bit of this. You could put a little bird in there. If you get a little finding from Bisu Boutiques, one of those cute little birds. A little charm or something. Yeah, a little charmy. And just slide that on there. You could put a little bird nest on there. Mm -hmm. Bird nest charm. I'm going to just put a little embroidery in here. And you can work it, work that in on the edges. You can actually f make it fall off the edge if that's your style, if that's what you like. Okay. So I'm just going to leave that for that. And that's pretty much the basic embroidery and the painting technique. Okay. And now Irene Hoffman is going to show you how to do vines and leaves on the embroidery, um, the polymer embroidery technique. Hi, I'm Irene Hoffman and I'm going to show you the technique on embroidery applique of leaves and vines. We're going to start with our, our uh, green color for the vines and the leaves and we're going to roll this out just a tad and what we're going to do after we've rolled it is cut a little piece off and you don't need a very big piece for this. I'm going to cut this and then cut it in half again and that's really all that you need for a leaf. These are very very small intricate little pieces you're working with and in your between your fingers you're going to press roll it into a ball then you're going to take that and press it on each end and once you get it the length that you want you press it in the middle and kind of squeeze in a little bit on the top and the bottom to give you the shape of your leaf. Now remember, leaves are all not the same size. So, so you press the ends on your leaf. You can have a little rounded end or a pointy end. It all depends on what your preference is. And then I take my point, pointy tool and I press right in the middle to give it that definition of a vein in the leaf. And at the same time, you can go ahead and put in other little veins in the leaf if you so wish to do that, or you can do it after you have placed the leaves on your piece. So we're going to do that here. These are a little tricky to work with because they're so small. So just get that pointer, place it on the vine, and kind of press down into the base a little bit so that it will bond when it's cooking. And for we're going to go to the vine now, which I should have probably done first. But we cut a piece of this as well and you will roll it to a very, very small size. You can roll it as small as you want, probably before it falls apart actually. So there we have it here. And we take this part, I've already cut this piece, and we can place it here next to the other vine. This is a very tricky process technique but it's beautiful when you're done. And then you press it in at the end Oops. 
Get in there. <laughs> and then just press down with on it with your hand a little bit. So it'll take a little bit better hold. And then I have the little bell flowers here. And as Marcia showed you previously, this is like a little speck of clay that you're going to take right off of another um, thin roll here. And the speck is so small. You pick that up and then run that through your hand a little. This is very small. And you place your needle in there. You position it on the base where you'd like, like it to lay. Press into your base again so that it bond. You can kind of hold it in place with your finger. And there's your bellflower. You can go you probably don't want to go too big on these because it'll overpower it a little bit. This is a really, really fine technique. So you just want to continue to place these wherever you may, however you want it to look. And these are tricky little fellows here. So and you can place as many as you'd like. And there you have it. Your bell flowers. Your vines. That looks and really your really leaves. Pretty. There, you there you have it. Thank you for bisuboutiques.com. <laughs> and let me mention I used the Bisu Silverware Mount, and for your information, the SKU number on that would be 030. Yes, Mount 030. And then these two heart charms are Brass Ox Heart Bezels, SKU number 09167. So please go to bisuboutiques.com, purchase your mounts and your bezels, and you're off and running with your embroidery applique. Yay! Thank you. So wasn't that great? We gave you just a little piece of our weekend, and I mean to say, that was just a little piece of our weekend. Actually, part of this stuff was technique that... Um, Irene and Marsha learned from, wasn't it Melissa Mock? Mm -hmm. yes. Out in California where they live. But then they took it to the next level with some things they learned from Christy. And that's the way it goes. You start in one place and you just keep on going. You know what? A lot of your best stuff is going to come from happy accidents. Don't that's you right. Absolutely. Wrong? It's, it's, it's the discovery. And that's the purpose of all of our videos is to enable you to get where you want to go with your art because art is a very healing thing it's something that's inside everyone don't ever let somebody tell you you can't do this because you can and any help that you need we have a lot of tutorials at bisuboutiques.com um, I think probably what we'll do is we'll take this video and we will link it on Marsha's page oh, thank for the you. designer page so that you'll be able to find it there on the site and maybe some of the bezels too. We could probably put it there too for now. Mm -hmm. We will be moving the site before too long, but it won't make any difference for you. You're going to go to bisuboutiques.com. You're just going to see a new face in bisuboutiques.com and it's going to be better. <laughs> so anyway, that's enough for today. We're all a little bit weary. We've had a long <laughs> yeah, <I mean. laughs> weekend, but it was a great one. Yes, yes it sure was. was. And I'm so glad to have these nice girls here from California Absolutely. in my Thank workshop. You. Had a great day. So you have a great day, too, and we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye.